All right, everyone. Welcome to the hundredth video on Blizzard. I don't know. I've lost count. It's been the same topic for a while, for a few days, I know. But uh, I do think this is an important story to cover. But hopefully after this one, we can delve into other topics. For now, though, I do want to discuss what's happened since Blizzard responded to the Blitzchung controversy, what the reaction's been like, and uh, just how things will progress moving forward. So we can see right here on Blizzard's official Twitter page that if you look at the tweet in regards to the response, the ratios speak for themselves. So 5.7 thousand likes versus 11.5 thousand replies. So that discrepancy in ratio already is pretty telling. It goes to show that people are uh, pretty disapproving of Blizzard's handling of all of this. And here's the response that they provided. Some of the greatest hits include how they talk about every voice mattering and then adding however, X, Y, and Z. As soon as you add however in front of, you know, freedom of speech and what have you, you're kind of rendering your point moot. Especially when the speech involves fighting for, you know, democracy, human rights, and what have you. It's not as if uh, Blitzchung said anything disrespectful, called for violence, anything of the sort. He just said, liberate Hong Kong, and that was it. And the punishment he got for that was a little too severe for an American company. Most laughable of all was this bit right here, where they claimed that their relationships in China had no influence on their decision, which nobody is buying. By the way, you can look at forums and social media, people talking about that statement, providing ample evidence to the contrary. They claim that what Blitzchung did was divisive and deliberate. Maybe what he said was divisive in China for the Chinese government and Chinese corporations. But again, Blizzard, you're an American company. Is it really divisive for somebody to say, liberate my country? You know, it just uh, brings your so-called values into question. And then right here we have how they walked back this uh, situation. So Blitzchung will be receiving his prize, after all, his prize money that was taken away from him, despite the fact that he fairly earned that. And then his one-year ban or suspension from esports was reduced to six months. And then for the casters, the two casters who were present, instead of being suspended outright, they are being suspended for six months as well. Now, a lot of people don't think that this is enough of a walk back. The casters shouldn't be punished at all. I mean, they were just there. You know, they, like, ducked behind the desk when Blitzchung made the statement that he did. And then for Blitzchung, again, Blizzard, your values are all about every voice mattering, thinking globally. And yet you're punishing someone for standing up for democracy, which you as an American company should also be standing up for. Which brings us to kind of how the community has been reacting. So a lot of people have been pointing out the contradiction here between Blizzard's statement about how their relationships in China had no influence on their decision, and then this statement right here that Blizzard provided on Chinese social media platforms. So this is specifically from Blizzard's official Hearthstone Weibo account. And this statement reads, we express our strong indignation or resentment and condemnation of the events that occurred in the Hearthstone Asia Pacific competition last weekend and absolutely oppose the dissemination of personal political ideas during any events or games. The players involved will be banned and the commentators involved will be immediately terminated from any official business. Also, we protect or safeguard our national dignity or honor referring specifically to the national dignity of China. Right here, another Reddit user was keen on pointing out the fact that Blizzard isn't necessarily a politically neutral company. They do stand for certain political ideals. So the LGBTQ community, they have shown adamant support for that community, which is fantastic, I think. But if they're going to show support for people speaking out about their gender identity and what have you, if there aren't any consequences for doing this, being politically outspoken about LGBTQ issues, then I don't think Blizzard should be punishing Blitzchung for speaking out about his political issues involving Hong Kong and the fight for democracy and human rights there. 
You know, it just it's so hypocritical to support this political view, but then when Blitzchung expresses his support for Hong Kong, which goes contrary to what the Chinese government wants, then they talk about how this isn't a platform for divisive social or political views. I think Blizzard should let people speak out as long as they're being respectful. You know, and Blitzchung wasn't disrespectful. He never called for violence or uh, lambasted anyone. He simply supported his country, just like how the LGBTQ community in these cases are supporting their own cause, which is great. A similar inconsistency can be found with what I talked about before about the college students in the official college Hearthstone tournament who held up this sign that reads Free Hong Kong Boycott Blizzard. For some reason, they weren't punished when they pretty much did the same thing Blitzchung did, and that's why these college players dropped out of the tournament. They felt it was hypocritical for Blizzard to punish Blitzchung, but not us. The response from Blizzard shows that as soon as the messaging is out of the view of China, they don't care about political messaging. And this is why if you go to Reddit, you'll see a lot of people talking about how Blizzard's response is just full of crap. You'll see people being baffled that Blizzard actually called basic human rights and fighting for that, fighting for democracy, a divisive viewpoint. Again, especially for an American company. You'll see uh, people uh, protesting in a variety of different ways. So this is something that somebody found in a store. A lot of people calling out the fact that Blizzard says that every voice matters and this, this, and that. And then they add, however, and this headline reads, Blizzard's apology, every voice matters. However, yours is inconvenient to our profits, which is, I think, how a lot of people feel about this situation. And then, yeah, a lot of people just saying, I don't believe for a second that China had no influence in Blizzard's decision. And then we got Rod Bruslow, who's been at the forefront of this. He's an esports consultant who has been sharing a lot of the news that's been happening and going to various news outlets like CNN and uh, Yahoo Finance. Most recently after J. Allen Brack provided the following response. On that front, here is what Rod Bruslow had to say. Activision Blizzard's statement is totally inadequate given the circumstances. This is what he told uh, CNN. It took over five days for Activision Blizzard to finally give a response, much more than it took the NBA or Apple, and it can be argued that they took the worst possible stance of the three. And we're even seeing various sponsors pull out according to what Reddit users are highlighting here. So here's a screenshot of what the Grandmasters tournament looked like before. We got a Mitsubishi logo here with, you know, various Mitsubishi cars highlighted. But then when we skip to after the Blitzchung debacle, the logo is gone and everything highlighting Mitsubishi products is gone. So it would seem as though the company pulled out after, uh, the way Blizzard responded, which is interesting. Now, this issue has gotten big enough that we're not just seeing protests online. As it turns out, according to this article by news outlet Vice, protests are also being organized here in the physical world, more specifically for Blizzard's upcoming BlizzCon event. So here is how news outlet Vice reported on this, quote, a coalition of activists and gamers and gamer activists are planning an umbrella protest at BlizzCon, Activision Blizzard's biggest annual conference, to push back against the company's censorship of a high-profile Hearthstone player who voiced support for Hong Kong pro-democracy protesters. Nonprofit activist group Fight for the Future is organizing the campaign, called gamersforfreedom.com to keep a scorecard keeping track of companies that have publicly pledged to not censor players like Blizzard. It is calling on players to show up to BlizzCon, which starts November 1st in California, to protest against the company censorship. The BlizzCon protest is named after the 2014 pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong. And then down here we see that Fight for the Future is a pretty legit organization and they've hosted a number of tangible protests before. It reads right here, Fight for the Future has successfully organized a host of major protests over the last few years, including some of the Internet's largest pro-net neutrality campaigns. These campaigns included large-scale public commenting campaigns on the FCC's website, purchasing billboards to shame anti-net neutrality lawmakers, and working to get Congress to support a bill that would restore net neutrality. In recent weeks, the organization has protested Amazon's ring partnerships with police, which allow police to obtain footage from Ring home surveillance cameras without 
a warrant. So they've got quite a resume, and the fact that they're getting involved now is no laughing matter. This is starting to get pretty serious. And then this is the website in question, gamersforfreedom.com, and the main excerpt shown at the forefront of this website reads as follows, freedom of expression is a fundamental human right, and it's outrageous to think that an American company would take away your money and your job simply because you want to be free from oppression. And yet game publisher Blizzard did exactly that after Hong Kong-based pro-gamer Blitz Chung advocated for his own political freedom during a live stream. Sign our petition to tell Blizzard and other game companies support free speech for gamers in America, Hong Kong, China, and everywhere else we play. So there's a petition here you can sign. There is a list of companies who have pledged or not pledged to not censoring anyone speaking out about their political views. And then uh, we have this segment talking about how to participate in the protest at BlizzCon. It reads right here, BlizzCon 2019 will be held at the Anaheim Convention Center next month. With gamers and journalists attending from around the world, BlizzCon will be the perfect opportunity for us to show Blizzard just how important our freedom is. Bring an umbrella, the symbol of freedom in Hong Kong, and join us at noon on November 1st for an epic day of protest with hundreds of other gamers who care. It'll be interesting to see how big this really grows. I mean, from the looks of it, this whole issue has gained so much traction that I do foresee a significant crowd doing this, but that remains to be seen. And then from there, there's a link to the official Discord for the protest, and it talks about how you can delete your Blizzard account if you want to go that far, and it lists some alternatives for Blizzard games like Diablo, Overwatch, Hearthstone, World of Warcraft, and StarCraft for those who want to boycott these titles, but play other games that are similar to them. So pretty extensive stuff. And then here is a, a roundup of things people have said about this whole issue from ex-Blizzard employees to senators, members of the media, you name it, to the protests happening within Blizzard. It's all here. It's a pretty comprehensive website for those who want to really uh, take a stand about this. And then on the official website for this protest organization, Fight for the Future, the deputy director and the product director have both provided statements about what they think in terms of this whole Blizzard situation. So Evan Greer, deputy director, said, this is not going away. Blizzard and other companies who are engaging in censorship on behalf of an authoritarian government are not going to get away with it. They have no idea what kind of internet shitstorm they have unleashed. We are going to make an example out of them to make sure that all companies know that throwing human rights and free expression under the bus to make some extra money will not be tolerated. And uh, Dayton Young here said something to that effect as well. Moving on, we are also seeing other outlets pick up on the protest and spreading that news around. This right here is an article from news outlet Kotaku talking about this whole situation, and they highlight what uh, Fight for the Future leads had to say about Blizzard's response. So this is a statement provided after the Blizzard response, and this is Young's take on that response. So it reads right here, while Young believes that Blizzard's statement and partial scaling back of Blitz Chung's punishment on Friday evening is a promising testament to the power of overwhelming public pressure, he doesn't think Blizzard's move solves the core issue and the protest is currently set to proceed as planned. Quote, the heart of the matter is they still censored a man and punished him for speaking out and advocating for his own political freedom, and that's what they're continuing to do. Indeed, Blitz Chung is still being punished. He's still suspended for a whole six months, which is a lot in the esports scene. They're saying this because they don't want to upset people, but I think people are already upset by their decisions. If Blizzard's true goal is to ensure that every player always feels safe and welcome when competing in tournaments and playing Blizzard games, then Blizzard should let players, fans, and employees know that they can advocate for their own rights without fear of reprisal. I think this is pretty well put. And then there is a whole protest BlizzCon subreddit that has cropped up. And on that matter, here's what one of the moderators had to say. What is happening are horrible human rights violations and suppression. When Blizzard, whose games and mottos support heroes and freedom, and who has stated on their company grounds that every voice matters, took away Blitzchung for simply saying he supports Hong Kong as the revolution of our times, 
I was shocked. He never used any foul or extreme language about China. It shows how companies are willing to say they support diversity and heroes until it doesn't pay. And then speaking specifically about the response that Blizzard provided to this whole situation, Thompson said that it didn't change his mind, and he called the situation ridiculous, saying that Blizzard has shown its true colors and now is trying to put the genie back in the bottle. As for what this subreddit's protest might entail, well, it says here that they are thinking about wearing shirts, banners, and flyers that have memes, images, and art of Overwatch's May supporting Hong Kong. So for those who've been keeping track of this story, you'll know that May, a Chinese character within Blizzard's own Overwatch, has become a major symbol for the protest in Hong Kong. There are people even planning to cosplay as May, and this protesting group is helping fund that. So that should be really interesting. There is, I can definitely imagine this BlizzCon featuring a lot of May cosplays wearing, you know, Hong Kong symbols and all that. Now, it was emphasized here that they do want this protest to be point and polite. They want this to be peaceful. They don't want any hate against, you know, Chinese people. And that's important to note, all this talk against China we aren't talking about people in China who have no say on this. We're talking about the Chinese government, the Chinese corporations. This has nothing to do with uh, the denizens in China or the Chinese culture or anything like that. So it's important to direct the anger at the right place, at the specific people within China who are responsible for the censorship and just the oppressive authoritarian government. So these are just some of the protest groups sharing their plans. It'll be interesting to see how this all pans out. This BlizzCon is going to be an interesting one. I think Blizzard, Activision Blizzard, they're hoping that this will all die down by the time November comes around. But I think this issue has gotten too big for that to happen. I think we're definitely going to see some pushback until Blizzard addresses this whole situation more properly because the response they provided here, this has only stoked the flames further. To close this video off, I'd like to share with you how Blitzchung has responded to this whole situation. On Twitter, he shared his sentiments, his thoughts on the way Blizzard has handled everything. The recent statement that they provided, here's what Blitzchung had to say. Thank you for your attention in the past one week. This is a personal statement and my view on Blizzard's latest decision. First of all, I am grateful for Blizzard reconsidering their position about my ban. Earlier this week, I told media that I knew I might have penalty or consequence for my act because I understand that my act could take the conversation away from the purpose of the event. In the future, I'll be more careful on that and express my opinions or show my support to Hong Kong on my personal platforms. Many people have has been asking me if I accept the latest decision of Blizzard. I'll discuss that on two parts, tournament pricing and suspension. For tournament pricing, I quoted what Blizzard said on the official website. They mentioned that I played fair in the tournament and they believe I should receive my pricing. This is the part I really appreciate. Blizzard also said they understand for some this is not about the prize, but perhaps for others it is disrespectful to even discuss it. People from Blizzard had explained this to me through a phone call and I really appreciate that and I accept the their decision on this part. For second part about the suspension, Blizzard had changed their suspension on me from a year to six months. Once again, I appreciate for their reconsideration on this. To be honest, I think six months is still quite a lot to me. And I think a lot of people feel the same way. Six months is still six months too many. But I'm also being told that I can continue to compete in the Hearthstone Pro Circuit, which they mean the Grandmaster Tournament. I appreciate for this decision they made because Grandmaster is currently the highest level tournament in competitive Hearthstone. However, I wish Blizzard can reconsider about their penalty on the two casters involved, who again were not directly involved. They let it happen, but they weren't the ones who spouted out the words. So... They just should not face any penalty whatsoever. Their suspension should be reduced to zero. Lastly, many people want to know if I would be competing in Hearthstone in the future. Honestly, I have no idea on that yet, since my next tournament is very likely to be the Grandmaster Tournament of next season. It's probably at least a few months from now. I will take this time to relax myself to decide if I am staying on competitive Hearthstone scene or not. Hearthstone changed the way I live. I really love this community. Blessing to all players out there and blessing to Blizzard. I really love how cool Blitzchung is being about this, how diplomatic he's being trying to look at things from both sides. He's being honest, saying like what feels fair, what he doesn't feel is fair. 
But in the end, he's accepting the consequences because he knew what he was doing and the repercussions that could cause. But he stood up to his cause anyway, his cause for supporting human rights, democracy for his country. Last but not least, here's a Q&A that Blitz Chung did during a live stream in which he answered people's questions about this whole situation. So one question that was asked, how do you feel about Chinese money controlling the gaming companies? His response was, well, I don't have full knowledge on what goes on behind the scenes, so it would be unfair for me to comment on that. And then he was asked, how do you think about Blizzard's statement that their decisions have nothing to do with Chinese influence? He once again said, I don't know what happens behind the scenes. It'd be unfair for me to make a judgment. Next question, does your statement mean you accept Blizzard's arrangement and apology? His response was, technically speaking, it's more of an arrangement than an apology. That is important to note. Nowhere in this post does Blizzard say sorry, apologize, express remorse for how severely they punished Blitzchung. They don't imply they did anything wrong here. They just try to kind of weasel their way out of this situation. And this is just a lot of excuses and them just explaining their retraction, their half step back of a retraction. Blitzchung continued, I accept what they plan to do with the money, which was already explained in the statements. Blizzard called me and explained their decision thoroughly. I still think the ban was too harsh, but I'm happy to stay in the Grandmasters. Then he was asked, did Blizzard Taiwan call you or did Blizzard headquarter? It was Taiwan because it would be inconvenient to call me from the US. Would you like more Hong Kong esports players to speak up? He said, I do want to talk about this matter. I don't like to push anyone to speak up. It's their freedom. Even if they have different ideas or voices, we have to respect each other. That is a noble stance right there. He's saying, I'm doing what I believe in. I don't want to pressure anyone to do something that they don't want to do. Next question, do you feel that you let the casters down? Have you apologized to them? And Bliss Chung's response was, yes, my biggest regret is that my actions brought the casters down. On that front, I'll say it is not Blitz Chung's fault at all. I mean, how could he have known that Blizzard would have China's hands so far up their asses puppeteering them that they would go as far as banning casters who had no direct involvement in Blitzchung's actions. Next question asked if uh, he accepts that Blizzard's ban was non-political, if that's an excuse he buys, and whether he is going to accept the returned prize money. He already said that he's going to accept the money, and then he expressed that he does have emotions about the ban. And then he said, but to be fair, he signed a contract when he agreed to play in Grandmaster, so he did technically break the rules, so the punishments are acceptable. Even if Blizzard was technically right, like contractually right in what they did, that doesn't make it morally right. Just like how, you know, gambling, the definition of legal gambling doesn't technically encompass loot boxes, that doesn't make loot boxes not gambling or morally correct to implement in games the way they've been now, you know? So we can look at the the legal side of things, the technical side of things, what's on paper all we want, but in the end, Blizzard did go against their own values, and I think that's what's garnering so much attention and backlash. Question, how do you feel about the American University players raising a free Hong Kong banner, but was not banned in the tournaments? He said, to be fair, I signed a contract, whereas those college players probably didn't sign such a contract. Here's the thing, though, regardless of what you sign or don't sign, when you participate in a Blizzard event like a tournament, Blizzard can, at their own discretion, decide to suspend someone, so they could have easily suspended the U.S. players for you know, violating the tournament guidelines or whatever for doing basically exactly the same thing that Blitzchung did, but they just didn't do that, even though they had the ability to do that. And that inconsistency to me and to a lot of people highlights the double standards that Blizzard has. When it comes to appeasing China, they'll do whatever it takes to do that to maintain those financial relations. But in the US, you know, they're just far more lenient because... China is not as interested in what happens in the US. And then last but not least, this question asked how Blitzchung feels about all the boycotts going on, people deleting accounts, leaving games, so on and so forth. And 
On that front, Blitzchung said, Well, I thank them for the support, but it wasn't what I would encourage. We can enjoy the game all we want. I mean, even if you don't do it, it's totally fine. For some people, it's their livelihood. Also, I was definitely not trying to damage Blizzard by my actions. Also, I really want to say one thing. I'm seeing a lot of people pushing streamers, players, casters, Blizzard employees, etc. to make a statement regarding me. I want to make it clear that whether you play Blizzard games or not, whether you make a statement or not, are completely your personal personal freedom. I don't think we should push people into anything. I also hope those who stayed neutral or silent won't be targeted by the crowd. Not that I don't appreciate your support, but it's their freedom. I am against this pushing others to speak up thing. Even if one disagrees with you, we have to respect each other. This is the fundamental line of democracy. Freedom and democracy are what Blitzchung is fighting for. It's why he did what he did, why he said what he said, despite the potential ramifications to his livelihood and to his life. You know, I mean, this, uh, what he did here puts him in a spotlight that could bring genuine danger to his own life. So I think it's very brave of him to do what he did. And I think uh, I I really uh, just uh, respect that he's so uh, driven about this stance for freedom and democracy and that he's all about people being able to do what they want to do and not being pressured into doing anything. So yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think about the latest developments on all of this. Let me know what your thoughts are on Blizzard's response claiming that no China relationships had influence in their decision. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.